Okay, we're going to start our limited color block in, and I have another video that I'm trying to get together as well that's basically going to be an overview of my limited color um, lecture with voiceover on it since you guys won't be in class, but um, I wanted to just briefly review the palette that we're using for this and how we come to this palette. Limited palettes are really helpful for organizing, organizing us by way of value as well as organizing us by color and temperature. So the palette that we use for this painting in the beginning class is Ivory Black, Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Indian Red, Burnt Sienna, and Yellow Ochre. Everything that's below the main color hue, the ones that I'm running my mouse along here, that's the color mixed with white. Everything that's above it is the color mixed with an appropriate color for the shade. So in the case of Indian Red, because it's a cool red, what I've done is I've mixed Ivory Black with it to make it shade color. You get this really beautiful kind of maroon, deep maroon color. For the um, Burnt Sienna, I've mixed it with a shade color that's in its color family, which is basically Burnt Umber to get this nice, rich, kind of reddish, dark brown. And then for the yellow ochre, what we've done is yellow ochre is in the yellow family and raw umber is in kind of the green-yellow family of browns. And so what I've done is I've mixed raw umber to make its shades. Part of the reason I do this variation isn't because we can't just mix black with all of these, although black is definitely across the color wheel in some ways and makes bigger color adjustments to these. But part of it is to keep to give us a nice variety of our shade colors that feel rich and still feel like they have a lot of the main color within them. Um, so we choose colors that are within their color family. And if you're not understanding what I mean by that, um, definitely make sure and watch that limited palette lecture again where I'll go over that information. You can see um, that what we did is we tried to get all the values to match. So when I look back at this original color palette, um, what I see just off the bat looking at this is that this is too light and this is too dark. So what we want is for all these values to line up and that makes our job painting much easier. When we're painting and we decide something needs to be in a certain value range, we don't have to decide and mix to that value, at least not as often. Obviously, if we have to get in between, we might have to do it. But if this is all set up correctly in the first place, then what we do is as we're putting in this raw umber, if we decide we need to cool it off a little bit, we just grab a little bit of this gray. It won't shift our value at all. All it will do is, is cool down that color. And by keeping the value correct, it allows us to stay within that same area of light and not shift our reading of light along with the temperature. Same thing with all of these. So as I go through and work with this palette, this shows the palette once I've made some adjustments. I never made this darker which I should have, but I did lighten the burnt umber. You can see how it was too dark here. And I did lighten that burnt umber. Later on, I was like, oh, I should have darkened this gray, and I just never did. So I just kept having to mix to it, which is what all this is over here, which really slows you down and just makes it more likely you'll make a mistake. When we mix this palette initially, what I tell people to do is to go through and check so all you need to do to check your values, if you're not good at reading that yourself yet, is take a photo with your phone and then go in and apply one of the color filters, apply the one that makes it monochromatic. You can see how this really stands out now as being too dark. This is a little less obvious just because of the lights and shadows in it, but if we look at it, we can see that that feels a little bit too light, especially compared to these first few piles over here. It can be hard to see the value differences as the colors get darker. So one thing that I'll do is I'll adjust my exposure on it and then the value differences might stand out a little bit more. You can see that the yellow ochre doesn't really line up quite as cleanly with the rest of this, but it doesn't really line up with where I want these either. So I just kind of leave it there and as I add yellow, I know that I might be lightening it a little bit, but that's just something to be aware of. We basically want these lines to fairly much line up and these lines to line up. So as we look at this palette initially, what we should have over here is on a 10-step gray scale, as I like to think of this bottom level as my twos, two or threes, this next level as my fours, this next level as my six, this level as my eights, and this level as my nine and ten. If I were really being technical, I would say a ten is a black, so obviously these other colors 
I'm not going to want to take all the way to a black or I'd probably lose a lot of their color cast as well. But that's just basically how I set it up. And then I usually have a bunch of white here, which I've been using for mixing. You can see that I replaced some of that white later on. And some of these piles got larger just since I knew I was bringing things home and I might need extra paint for mixing. So that's basically how I do the palette. Um, as we look at the color block in, so we've got the finished underpainting that I had done before. I'm going to move this out of the way. Make sure this is where you guys can see it. Gosh, I hate this little bar. Okay, and as we start going through, actually I need this to drag through, I need to start blocking in some of my color. So, as I mentioned before, I usually start with my background. I start blocking in that background because it's an easy way to match color and value and in a very basic way and not like do a big mistake right away. Um, it's easily adjustable. It's not like I've gone in and blocked in like smaller items here that I have to be more careful about my judgments. And it just kind of lets my hand get used to the brush, get used to the painting, figure out what brush I want to use. Like I started out with one brush and I switched to a different brush as I went through and kept blocking this in because I didn't like the way that that brush felt against the background. You can see that I've added in like some cooler areas that I'm adjusting. I'm basically going back and forth between my raw umber tints and my gray tints to get more of a neutralized kind of middle tone. And remember that this underpainting, you might not realize it, but I did this block in directly after finishing wiping out the underpainting. So it's wet. So all of this underpainting is going to be mixing into what I do. Sorry, my kids are sending all kinds of memes about the coronavirus. Okay, so this underpainting is going to be mixing into what I do as I keep going. And um, that's something to keep in mind as, as you're working on this, that this is going to adjust your top layers. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into other things. So here I'm just still trying to block in that underpainting in the background. And then I went to the bottle, which for me... The drawing was a little bit out of um, whack in here, and um, gosh, I really need to figure out how to shut these off. <laughs> okay, um, the drawing was a little bit out of whack in here, and, and it was small. I don't like to paint my objects this small, typically, and I wanted to work in sizes that were a little bit more reminiscent of what you guys were working in. So I did block this in larger on my canvas, which meant I naturally um, cropped some of this stuff out. Um, you can see that I blocked in basically this area. I mixed a little bit of a green using my black and my yellow ochre to block in some of this bottle. And, um, and then I started blocking in the box. As I blocked in the box, I was using my tints of burnt sienna, which is a little bit more orangey. And as I got into this, what I decided was that burnt sienna was too orange. And I brought in a little touch of the pure Indian red into it so that I could make it just a little bit more of a red orange and not quite so much of the orange orange. I think that's where I brought in the red right there. Okay, and mixed that into it and then worked back in with some of my burnt sienna again. I used some of my um, shades that I had mixed of the burnt sienna and I had a little bit of red still strongly on my brush so I probably will need to darken that a little bit more later. I think I did that as I was doing the underpainting as well as I came in with a little bit more of the shade tone to hit that and then I hit the side of the box as well. So at this point what I'm doing, um, and this is one of the things I really caution you guys about um, doing correctly in the beginning, is I'm trying not to fuss. Like there's all kinds of little things I need to do on this and, and the box and the bottle. Notice I didn't worry about any lights or anything like that. I didn't even worry about finishing the blend here. All I did was just block in my major color tones and that's really what you're going to see that's all you're going to see in this demo today is me going through on this and just blocking in the entire painting until it gets to more of a finish level as far as like just blocking in all my major lights and values. Um, lights, values, I mean, and then color temperature references. So as I start going through, I looked at the light area of this. I was working on things that were adjacent to areas I'd already painted which is why I started in that light plane, and I started making some judgments on that. As I moved into this blue paper, remember our palette doesn't have 
um, blue on it. The closest we have is gray. Well, right now that gray, as I said, that gray is going to be mixing into this umber underneath. So it's going to kind of naturally warm it a little bit, but that's okay. If this is the only thing I paint with that gray, it's still going to feel blue compared to other things within this image once I get done with it. So I blocked in a little bit too dark on the gray. I came in with a little bit lighter gray to adjust it closer to this value right here. Um, a lot of these shadows, I'm letting the shadows that I blocked in kind of carry them initially, and that's why I go into more of the lights, because I've got the value pretty much in there for the, the shadow side right now, and I'm a little less worried about that. I'm more worried about capturing some of these colors within the lights. Um, as I went through, I started figuring out what I wanted to do as far as the dark green within this pot, and then I'm going to go over and start figuring out a lighter green area. I know one of the things that you guys get really frustrated with is the inability to hit the exact colors in your final painting. That is what this project is about. It's about not being able to hit the exact colors, but making correct judgments with your palette using your understanding that you're building as far as color families. So don't let that be a stopping point from you. Is this green this green? Absolutely not. It's not even close to it. However, it is close to being um, the, the color of green. And it's, I'm trying to hit closer to some of these values within here and give myself a good reference for where this is finally going to go at the end. I can obviously hit the green a little bit better over here because I'm using black and I'm starting to hit in a little bit cooler. So it is going to be a cooler green, but when I lighten it, it's naturally going to warm up just a little bit because of the yellow that's in there and because I don't have um, a good cool green to start with. As I keep, sorry, my kids talk a lot, I guess. As I keep doing this, what's going to happen, actually, I think this will shut that off. As I keep doing this, what's going to happen is that it's going to continue. Um, I can cool this off a little bit more and try and make it more of a gray green. Okay, and that's what I would do as I keep refining this painting. So now I've got a lot of these major color areas blocked in. Very simply, I'm not looking at all this. This is the kind of stuff you guys go right into this. You go right into trying to figure out all these little shapes and all these little nitpicky things. And that's what I'm trying to say when I'm telling you I really want you to focus on the larger picture initially. It's much more important that you get the value relationships correct and you can make fine-tuning adjustments to the color. Like this obviously needs to cool off as well. It's not going to be green, but I use this lighter green to try and hit closer to my values and just to help create some separation for me initially from other things. And then I will cool this off more and get the yellow out of it as I start to build this up later on. I hit a shadow value here in the background, I mean in the shade area of this little tray and um, so as I keep going through, I'm just kind of refining some of those values. And now as I come down into the bottom drapery, I think you'll see, let me move this out of the way a little bit more for where we're working. I think you'll see that um, I'm trying to kind of keep some of these values correct. Um, this area is pretty much done originally in a lot of the same colors that are in your palette. So you shouldn't have too difficult of a time hitting something that's close to this in color, unless you're just struggling with understanding color temperature. But you can see as I keep moving forward on this, how we start blocking in the shadows. I hit that little shadow up here in the corner. I'm hitting some of the shadow inside the box. And let's go through the end of this clip. And then I was hitting some of the cast shadow in the background. Now let's quit this one. We'll go into the second part of this where we'll kind of finish this up. So you can see that we've got a lot of this blocked in. Let me kind of scrub through some of this a little bit more quickly. And as I go through and hit, you can see how I'm just generalizing. I'm getting basic values. This is kind of what I'm asking you guys to do is generalize, place these values and get a good feeling for what's happening as far as your color and value, how that color and light is casting across how it shifts. I made it slightly cooler in this versus the warm part up here. 
I, this mixture and the mixtures that I'm using overall within the drapery are predominantly raw umber tints, burnt umber tints, and a little bit of yellow ochre or yellow ochre tints to warm it up as I need to go. I try and preserve some of my underpainting shadows and stuff even though I know they're going to be blocked out later just to help me keep the drawing in there. Um, but what I want is a good feeling overall of what's happening within that painting as far as all the drawing and painting. You can see that as I moved into this area that I lowered my values down because the same thing's happening here. The light is basically what we call this as the light is rolling down the form. So the light source is obviously in this area in relationship to the objects in the painting. As it casts across, it's going to be brightest on this top plane that's more perpendicular and brightest over here where it's casting more on this side plane. And then as the plane goes away and gets further away, it becomes a little bit more in half tone areas. Now I'm blocking in some of these background values. I was blocking in the light that's on the, hitting the inside rim of the box. As I keep going, I'm going to make some adjustments. I ended up making the light inside the box lid and inside the box itself a little bit more of the burnt umber tints, shifting the values just a little bit away from my raw umber that I'm using so predominantly everywhere else. I brightened this up and then I actually added a little bit of a yellow ochre into it to make it feel a little bit more warm and not quite such a peachy pink. So there, that's where I started adding in the yellow ochre, giving it a little bit more light in there and a little bit more warmth so it stands out a little better. Felt like this was standing out more strong than what I had. I hit a little bit of this edge just because I wanted to get this clarification between these two objects and what was happening. And as I keep going through, I figured out that the bottle needed to be a little bit lower. I lost some of the drawing, like I said. I hit some of that color in there. But no, in no way, shape, or form could you say I'm fussing with that bottle yet. And then I started trying to figure out where the handle was in here, but I really lost that with putting in the underpainting. So I know I'm going to have to come back. I looked at it later and I was like, oh, that handle isn't where I got it painted. But that's okay pretty easy. I wanted to see that um, top lifting handle for the pot lid and then I blocked in a little bit more value in the background there and tried to soften that shadow edge that was right here and then started hitting all the way down to these values. So as we come into the final part of this painting you can see that we've got a pretty good read. We can definitely feel how the light is casting. You can see I've got a little bit of this cast shadow that's being created by this fold coming forward and the cast shadow underneath here. I'll need to play with it some more. But I've got a lot of these basics drawn in and we're definitely getting the feeling of the way the light casts across. Overall, it's actually a pretty decent underpainting. Yeah, there's refinements and things that I lost or need to get back in, but my, my whole goal in this level of the painting for you guys to understand is to really get my value relationships correct as I start blocking in my color. So what do I see that I need to adjust? Well, I need more brightness in here. I'm going to need to find this handle again, which I, I lost somewhere in the middle of all this. I didn't worry about the top planes here of the rim of the box. That's something that would come in more as I work my details. I need to clean this up. I need to soften my blends in the background. I'm going to make adjustments to where I have shadows in here and clean up the edges of this. Um, I didn't add in this little guy just because it's all the way off the edge anyway so I simplified it down to this area. Um, I'll need to soften things and kind of resolve all these shadows but overall it's a pretty good reference to the final painting and the color temperatures using that palette that we described. So that's what I'm looking for you guys to do. This is where you should start. My next pass on this that I do will be to start refining some of these things and I'll try and get that up there soon.